This aircraft was one of a kind and was developed in the 1970s to protect the Soviet Union's borders. It was designed to take off and land vertically, although it could fly normally or land on water. Whenever an American submarine would come close to Soviet territory, it was their job to find and eliminate them. In this video, we'll talk about the Bartini Beria VVA-14, which is the strangest Soviet plane ever. We'll discuss its history and why this project failed. So stay with us till the end. Robert Bartini, the famous Italian-born Soviet Union designer, also known as the Red Baron, the Bartini Beriev VVA-14 is named in his honor. He enlisted in the Austro-Hungarian Army and fought in the First World War until June 1916 when the Russians seized him and transferred him to a prisoner of war camp. However, Bartini's lifelong interest in aviation was driven by intense enthusiasm. Bartini moved to Italy after his release in 1920, where he attended and eventually graduated from the Milan Polytechnic Institute's Aerospace Engineering Program in 1922. The man also became a trained pilot. Bartini fled fascist Italy after Benito Mussolini came to power, eventually settling in the Soviet Union, where he worked as an aviation engineer for the Soviet Armed Forces. When he relocated, he could finally reach his full creative potential and produced several groundbreaking designs that gained international renown. After Robert Bartini started working on constructing a new plane, successful test flights of the single copy project MVA-62 began, which led to the development of the VVA-14 amphibian. The new plane was supposed to be able to do search and rescue missions in addition to detecting hostile missiles and multifunctional submarines. The first prototype, designated VVA-14M1, was created in 1972. The amphibian's maiden voyage took place on September 4, 1972. The designers unofficially dubbed the peculiar plane they were keeping an eye on from the ground Zmei Gorinich, or a Slavic dragon, because of its impressive size. After identifying several problems on the maiden voyage, Bartini set out to address them. Changes were made to the design in 1974 and inflatable pontoons were first installed before being swapped out for rigid ones. Further, there was an issue with the installation of a lifting engine required for vertical takeoff. Three people comprised the VVA-14 crew. The aircraft's power plant, which consisted of two cruising and 12 lift turbofan engines, allowed it to reach a top speed of 472 miles per hour, or 760 kilometers an hour. The service ceiling was between 26,250 and 32,800 feet, and the maximum range was 1,522 miles or 2,450 kilometers, 8,000 to 10,000 meters. There were either two aircraft torpedoes, eight aircraft mines, or 16 aircraft bombs in the arsenal. The aircraft designer had hoped that work on the lifting engine would soon be finished so that the plane could take off vertically. Therefore, it was decided to equip the VVA-14 with the capability of an Ekranoplan, allowing for virtual flying at high altitudes in the same way that airplanes do. Bartini Beriev passed away in Moscow on December 6, 1974 at the ripe old age of 77. He was laid to rest in Moscow in Vavedinskaya Cemetery. The words, in the country of the Soviets, he kept his commitment to devote all life that the red planes flew faster than the black ones are engraved on his memorial. After being stripped of its irrelevant parts in 1987, the prototype was delivered to the Soviet Central Air Force Museum. The grandiose dream of the brilliant Italian aircraft designer is now a depressing show of failure. Once the Soviet Union's best defense against U.S. submarine strikes, this strange plane's sole surviving prototype is now broken down in a field near Moscow. The Bartini Beria VVA-14, an acronym for Vertical Takeoff Amphibious Aircraft, that refers to the aircraft's ability to take off and land vertically, was designed to take off and land on any surface of the water and maintain flight at or near the water's surface. As part of its nuclear deterrent, the United States began installing nuclear weapons on its submarine fleet in 1961. Robert Bartini, the amphibious VVA-14's creator, thought it would be the ideal machine to hunt down and destroy the missile-carrying submarines. As it turned out, though, the idea was a bust. Of the original three prototypes planned, only two were ever constructed, with only one even taking to the air. 
Unfortunately, the project ended with Martini's passing in 1974, and the other prototypes were scrapped as a result. According to Andriy Savenko, a Soviet aviation historian, the VVA-14 was a flying boat that was designed to take off from water or land vertically and then fly like a regular plane at altitude. Meeting Robert Bartini's deputy and plane designer Nikolai Pogorolov in 2005 was a highlight for Savenko. Bartini was a visionary with a peculiar mind and personality, as described by Pogorelov. Someone even labeled him an extraterrestrial, because obviously he wasn't from the same century as everyone else. There is little doubt that Bartini made an impact on aircraft design in the Soviet Union. His fame, however, was founded primarily on speculation. Only a small number of his ideas were ever implemented, Savenko explains. These planes lacked both lifting engines and equipment for detecting submerged threats. Its sole purpose was to test the plane's systems and analyze its horizontal flying characteristics. From 1972 to 1975, it made 107 flights for a total of more than 103 flight hours. This plane made an effort to incorporate a wing-in ground effect layout with vertical takeoff and landing characteristics. We have no doubt that in your life you have encountered many bizarre and unusual military vehicles, vessels, and planes. The VVA-14 is often cited as having a design unique even by aircraft standards. The Development and Design it was mainly built for water takeoffs and maintaining high speeds over great distances. Its primary function was to glide swiftly through the air at great heights, but it also had to be able to fly low and hover over bodies of water. The first, designated VVA-14M1, was merely a proof-of-concept prototype. The development team checked to make sure their plans would hold up in practice and made any necessary adjustments based on their findings. Following that time period, the VVA-14M2 was released to the public and was able to perform vertical takeoffs and landings. The second VVA-14 was an improved version of the original. A greater number of systems and controls meant it was more efficient. Finally, the VVA-14M3 was armed and nearly perfected the VTOL characteristics of the second aircraft. An anti-submarine warfare system and magnetic anomaly detectors were also significant upgrades for the third VVA-14. The concept as a whole was too ambitious and novel to be pursued at that time. Without the individual who spearheaded the aircraft's development, it became impossible. The high hurdles encountered by the entire concept during development also played a significant role in the decision to shelve the project. Back then, the concept of a fast-moving vertical takeoff and landing aircraft was seen as grandiose. There's no way or budget to construct something like that, even in the present day. Remember that during operation, the VVA-14 had several problems since Bartini often made improvements to improve the plane. No country's military industry at the time could have easily tackled the design's integration with the controls and systems. While the VVA-14 was effective, the Soviet Union desired a more dependable aircraft during the Cold War. It had several intriguing features, but the Soviets wisely chose to pursue a less risky course of action. Because of delays caused by complications and the unfortunate untimely demise of the aircraft's designer, the VVA-14 was never able to realize its potential as one of the most potent and useful aircraft for any Air Force. Maybe if Robert Bartini was alive, he could have made his dream become a reality. Would Robert Bartini's ambition have been met? And would the VVA-14 have become the best plane ever? If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for regular military updates. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching.